When we're dealing with planar trusses, one of the things that can make your job easier is to learn what makes a zero force member. In general, once you've got this truss going on, if you look at any individual joint, there are two different cases where you can know already that one of the members at, at that joint is going to be zero, or more of them. If you have only two members that come into a joint like this, and they're not lined up, then what you can say is if I summed the forces along one of them, then the other one is not along that one because it's not collinear and it must be zero. So at this point, what you can say is by summing the forces along one and then along the other, they have to both, in fact, be zero. Now this is obviously not going to be true if I put a force there. So this in includes the notion that there is no external load at that point. The other way that you can do this is with three members coming into a joint like this, where two of them are collinear and the other one isn't. As soon as you do that, you can sum the forces along the, the line that two of them are on, and the third one, then, you see has to be actually equal to zero. So these two situations allow you to say, I know automatically that that member has to be zero. And this can make your analysis a lot easier when you've got a whole lot of members in your truss. But it does depend on your loading that you've got here. And it's iterative. So if you look at this truss, where I have a two-kip load out on the end. If I looked at the joint at D, then what you can say is, at that point, CD and DE are lined up, which means that DH isn't. If DH isn't lined up, then that force has to be zero. And the joint at F, if you, once you look at this, you can come over here and it's the same situation. The joint at F tells you that BF must be zero because AF and FG are collinear and there are no external loads happening at F. Once you have this one as zero, look at the joint at B. Now the joint at B only includes A, B, B, C, and B, G. Again, two of them are lined up and one of them isn't. So at that point, what you can say is that, that B, G has to be zero. And then you go again. Once you know that B, G is zero, look at the joint at G. Now it only includes F, G, G, H, and at C, G. So that one has to be zero. And you go up to C, and now this one has to be zero. All of a sudden, you've got that only these members exist anymore in your truss. And you come back to just the basic notion of a triangle. Now, all bets are off if I come in here and I put a load at one of these places. So while it looks like this truss is a whole lot stronger, it's more versatile. You can have a lot of different loading conditions that will work for this same truss. But for any individual loading situation, you can say that all of those interior members, the way this particular truss is set up, all of those have to be zero.